Okay, starting. Ladies, gentlemen, it is a real privilege to open our webinar today, hosted by the Center for Studies on New Religions and Human Rights Without Frontiers, which I salute and thank. Today, April, today, April 5, 2022, marks the International Day of Conscience the third UN International Day of Conscience. In fact, this special day of, of observance was established by the United Nations General Assembly on July 25, 2019, with the adoption of the UN Resolution 73329, and the first International Day of Conscience was celebrated on the following April 5th. This decision at the UN has an important story. We all know the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted on December the 10th, 1948. This document establishes a shared standard in recognizing and acknowledging the dignity of every human being living in the world, past, present and future. Of course, we know that many countries and many regimes do not respect, did not respect, and slightly will not yet respect, or even formally recognize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, either paying only a lip service to it or blatantly denying its core values. 
Nonetheless, every civilized, cultured and good-hearted human being does uphold it with no hesitation. But none of us is so superficial to believe that human rights started existing when a written document put them on paper. Human rights predate the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yes, we have touched the subject many times during our long series of webinars on the Taiji Men case. But allow me a brief reminder. The basic and only rationale of human rights is human nature. Human beings enjoy rights, have certain specific rights, because they are humans. No one can dare curtail or deny those human rights because this simply means assaulting human nature as such, which is in the power of no one to do or even think. Thus, the whole idea of having human rights stated into a solemn declaration, the very need of establishing such a document may seem odd to some or many. It is not. One of the most common and sad sin we repeatedly see committed in by human beings is forgetfulness. Humans tend easily to forget, either involuntarily or by guilt. A, docu a document like the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights is then not the source of human rights, but, as all constitutions do, serves to combat the daring human scene of, of forgetfulness. Bringing countries and nations and governments to publicly recognize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights means bringing them to kneel in front of that intangible miracle which is human dignity. And this is never too much. Now, we cannot speak of human rights without centering our attention on conscience, that distinctive feature, that among other distinctive feature, a few of them, not many, makes humans human and humane. The word conscience came, come from, comes from Latin, and it means knowing oneself. It is the first pivotal stage of knowledge from which all scientia depends. Conscience is in fact a very intimate mode of knowledge. It comes in when a person realizes three basic things. First, he is her Second, outside him, herself, as distinct, as distinct from him, herself. And third, a mysterious origin of both him, herself, and the surrounding reality, when he or she realizes that no human being can ultimately create neither the intimate conscience of a person or self and the surrounding reality. This is where religion, hence religious liberty, enters the picture. In fact, men and peoples throughout all history have always identified that mysterious origin as God, a superior being, or a supreme spiritual entity. I underline that throughout, throughout all human history, apart the last two or three centuries, which means just a small dot along the great walk of humanity on Earth. And even this exception is a partial exception and concentrated into in the West, and even there in the modern West, in total decline, as a scholars of new religious movement in the so-called postmodern world document. While promising the story of the International Day of Conscience, today I began with the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, because the day we are celebrating starts exactly there. In 2018, his Royal Highness Prime Minister of Bahrain, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, insisted upon the world leaders in the United Nations to strongly endorse the principles written and recognized in that fundamental document. Evidently, those principles had not been endorsed as they deserved until that moment. 
So the Prime Minister of Bahrain submitted a draft where he importantly stated that ignoring human conscience ultimately means to do harm to human beings. His proposal was finally accepted and the UN General Assembly established April 5th, the 5th as the International Day of Conscience. But few people know that Taiji Men had a great role in that decision. Taiji Men founder and chief of Dr. Hong Tao Tse has accomplished many important goals through the Federation of World Peace and Love, or FOPOL, which he established in the United States in the year 2000 to actively, actively promote love and peace on Earth. Today, FOPOL counts members in 137 countries. In 2014, FOPOL launched the Movement of an Year of Conscience and from 2018 collaborated with the permanent missions to the United Nations of Bahrain and other countries to draft the very document that adopted giving birth to the International Day of Conscience. So Taiji Men is at the core of the International Day of Conscience, acting as the conscience of the world movement for peace and love. In other words, both the International Day of Conscience could possibly not exist without Fopol, Taiji Men, and Dr. Hong, and the International Day of Conscience is really a part of the Taiji Men heritage. Now, how it, how it is possible that the world, which applauds and endorses the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the world that recognizes human dignity and human right, even before the need of a written document, the world which established an International Day of Conscience to actively and practically implement that document, how is it possible that this world can tolerate a quarter of the century of unjust persecution of Taiji men with its whole burden of false accusations of crimes supposedly committed by its chief Wendizi that several courts of law ruled they never, never did? As you may know, I am a Roman Catholic. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, published in its final form in 1997, it is said that conscience is the echo of the Word of God in human beings. It is indeed a noble, highest feature, but it is not infallible, because only God is and not his echo as perceived by humans. There is only one way the Catechism continues to assure infallibility to human conscience, and it is by anchoring conscience to truth. The entire human person, the Catholic Catechism says, is implied in the search for truth, because truth is never partial. The word truth resounded high many times during our series of webinars on the staggering Taiji Man case. May this third International Day of Conscience be the last one, seeing Taiji Men, Shifu and Dizi stripped of their dignity so that truth can prevail at last. All people implied in the Taiji Men case have just to look deeply into their own conscience to find it, echo of God. So, thank you for attending this webinar. Our panelists are ready to present their own papers, as well as our witnesses to share their testimonies. But before I introduce them, let me invite you to watch an important video, the third part of the documentary entitled Unbreakable Bonds. Unbreakable Bonds, Episode 3 On May 5, 1997, Prosecutor Ho was interviewed during the TV program News 100 on TVBS. The host, Li Siduan, asked Prosecutor Ho, How did you determine that he raised goblins? Ho Quan Zhen gloated in the media and said publicly, Of course he denied it. I saw a streak of shadow in his eyes, and as we're handling the case, my instinct tells me that he has raised goblins. What? A prosecutor could simply use the look in a person's eyes 
as evidence to decide whether to prosecute that person? It was the first time that the term raising goblins was included in an indictment in the judicial history of the Republic of China. He obviously violated the principle of scientific investigation, empirical rules, and theoretical rules. Prosecutor Ho talked about raising goblins on the TV show, causing a whirlwind of ghostly talks in the media at that time, polluting the island. As soon as the indictment with the accusation of raising goblins came out, many legal professionals came forward to condemn him. Prospective judicial officers are reminded not to make such a ridiculous accusation during their training sessions. The absurdity has seriously undermined judicial prestige. When the Dizzy got the indictment, they found more unreasonable things in it. For example, some statements in the indictment are completely contradictory to each other. Prosecutor Ho fabricated a large sum of money and claimed that it was criminal proceeds of religious fraud and must be confiscated pursuant to law. He also claimed that the same money was the legal income of the cram school and must be taxed by the NTB. Is it proceeds of crime or legal income? Please clarify. This absurd and contradictory indictment was used by the NTB as a decree to persecute Thai G men for 20 plus years. In April, May, and June of 1997, without the approval of his boss, Prosecutor Ho Kwan Jen sent letters to the Ministry of the Interior and County and City Governments. Ho in his letters demanded the government agencies to dissolve Thai G men. In June, letters were sent to the public works of Taipei City and County to request them to cut off water and electricity to Tai Ji Men. This forced Tai Ji Men Dizzy to seek administrative remedies, which took two years to cancel the orders completely. On the same day, Tai Ji Men received an official letter from Taipei City Government, ordering the dissolution of Tai Ji Men on the one hand. On the other hand, it also received an invitation from the Taipei city government to perform at the Dragon Boat Festival the following year, 1998. Shifu held the two letters in his hands, not knowing either to laugh or cry, as one was to dissolve Tai Ji men while the other was to invite it to perform. Seeing all the nonsense, the dizzy felt indignation. Tai Ji men is loyal to the country. Why does the government treat us this way? In 2002, the Control Yuan took the initiative to investigate Prosecutor Ho's handling of the Tai Ji Men case, and confirmed he had eight major violations of the law. First, violation of the requirement that investigation should not be disclosed, bringing the media to searches, getting interviewed by the media many times during the investigation, and discussing about the case openly. Second, illegal searches, the search reason is far-fetched. The address on the search warrant is wrong, illegal freezing of assets. Before the facts were ascertained, all property was frozen, which violated people's property rights. Fourth, undermining prosecutors' image of fair law enforcement, making a biased decision prior to the trial, illegally calling for the establishment of a self-help association in the media, and Ho Kwan Jen admitted that he did not investigate or verify whether the victim list was true. Fifth, overstepping his authority, violation of freedom of association, unlawfully ordering the county and city governments to shut down Thai G Men Academies. Sixth, serious infringement of the defendant's rights, arbitrary detention and interrogation, failure to notify the defendant's lawyers in accordance with the law, establishment of the false self-help association to commit perjury, etc. Seventh, injuring judicial prestige, he prosecuted the case before searching for evidence. After the indictment was released, he started searching for evidence the next day and interviewed the Shifu on that afternoon. This seriously violated due process of law. Eighth, serious violation of the principle of scientific investigation. He used his imagination and made up the accusation of raising goblins. There were totally eight major violations of the law. After its investigation, 
the control yuan found that the indictment and the evidence contradicted each other and did not conform to the law of evidence. The control yuan conducted an investigation in 2002, and then asked the Ministry of Justice to severely punish Ho Kwan Jen for his negligence. The Ministry of Justice has failed to do its job and has been procrastinating. Knowing that the punishment of Ho Kwan Jen has nothing to do with the Tai Ji Men criminal decision, it insisted on conducting another investigation after the court decision was issued. After 10 years and 7 months, the criminal division of the Supreme Court issued the final decision on July 13, 2007. Tai Ji Men was found not guilty of fraud, tax evasion, or violation of the Tax Collection Act. The Ministry of Justice and the High Prosecutor's Office stated, Ho Kwan Jen could not be punished because the 10-year statute of limitations had expired last month. What? The statute of limitations has expired? As the officials protect one another, who will protect the people? It is not easy to obtain compensation for wrongful imprisonment in criminal cases in Taiwan, as the court sets very high standards when it comes to granting compensation. Granting compensation means that the prosecutor's indictment is wrong or the judge's decision is wrong. Cases are usually denied on the basis of the litigants, intentional or gross negligence. In 2009, the innocent Tai Ji Men Shifu and Dizzy, who were detained by the prosecutor all gained compensation for unlawful imprisonment from the government. What does this mean? It represents the government's apology for this unjust case. Why are taxpayer dollars used to pay compensation and a civil servant does something wrong? A judicial officer's mistake can cause people to lose their time, money, and lives. In fact, what the people need is not compensation for unlawful imprisonment, but real human rights protection. Tai Ji Men Shifu and Dizzy hope there will be no more unlawful detention. They hope that other people will no longer suffer gross human rights violations as Tai Ji Men does. Dear viewer, this concludes the episode, Tai Ji Men was declared innocent by the Supreme Court. During Tai Ji Men's journey to seek redress for the injustices, what righteous people assisted Tai Ji Men? Please continue to watch the fourth episode of Unbreakable Bonds. The series Unbreakable Bonds is really important to get directly into the, the core of the matter. Uh, of course, our panelists and witnesses today will discuss all this at length and in depth. Our first welcome um, panelist speaker today is Professor Massimo Introvigne, founder of the Center for Studies and New Religions and editor-in-chief of Bitter Winter magazine, which I am honored to serve as the director in charge. Uh, Professor Introvigne, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marco. And uh, since the United Nations, uh, thanks, uh, as we have heard, to the efforts of Dr. Hong and uh, Taiji Men, established April 5 as uh, one of the day of, the, of observance of the International Day of Conscience, uh, I started reflecting on a coincidence that what is uh, perhaps the most important uh, Italian novel of the 20th century, a novel we study in school with some problems because it's very difficult, has the word conscience uh, in its title. And this novel is called La Coscienza di Zeno, Zeno's Conscience, uh, published uh, in uh, um, 1923, by a writer called uh, uh, Italo Svevo. Now, Italo Svevo's real name was Aaron Hector Schmitz, and uh, he was uh, a Jew from the cosmopolitan city of Trieste on what was uh, then the Austrian Empire. <clears throat> but the fact that he selected Italo as the first uh, name 
in his pseudonym Italo, of course, from Italia, means that he uh, acknowledged himself as an Italian writer. However, Svevo's mother tongue was not Italian, it was German, and he recognized the ambiguity of the Italian word coscienza. Now, in English, there are two different words, and we more or less uh, understand the difference, uh, conscience and uh, consciousness. But in Italy, conscience and consciousness are both translated by coscienza. And uh, uh, while conscience and consciousness share uh, the same root, in German, the two words are totally different. Conscience is translated as Gewissen, and the consciousness uh, is translated as Bewusstheit. And it's interesting that uh, uh, Svevo's novel uh, became popular in German, as it's popular in, I would say, most other languages of the world, but in different translations, uh, it was alternatively translated as Zenos Gewissen, conscience, uh, and Zenos Bewusstheit, uh, consciousness. Now, this may seem a, a little bit pedantic, but in fact, uh, it's the heart of the novel. <coughs> Sorry, a little bit of seasonal allergy. The novel is in fact uh, a sort of uh, tennis table match between Svevo and uh, Sigmund Freud. Uh, and uh, Svevo was very familiar with uh, uh, Freud's psychoanalysis, but he was both attracted and repelled by psychoanalysis. Now, Freud established limits for our consciousness claiming that most of what influences us and is important in our life actually lies behind the consciousness in the unconscious, unconscious. And Freud also cast suspicion on conscience, claiming conscience is not a natural moral compass. It's just a repository of moral theories many of them highly objectionable, inculcated in each of us by our family or by uh, society. Now, we don't easily understand what uh, Svevo made of all this because uh, he used the literary technique known as the unreliable narrator. Actually, there are three levels that makes uh, the novel so difficult for uh, Italian students when we had to study it in uh, high school. Because uh, first, of course, it's a world of fiction. Second, uh, the book in the fiction is edited by an imaginary, uh, unscrupulous uh, uh, Freudian uh, doctor who has been given uh, uh, the journal of his client, uh, Zeno, has promised not to publish it, but in fact, it's publishing it. So he's a dishonest doctor. How can we trust him? And third, uh, uh, the doctor, in his introduction, fiction, of course, uh, the doctor says Zeno is a pathological liar. So when we read the the Journal of Zeno, we are really not sure that even if we enter the fictional universe, uh, what uh, he says should be uh, perceived as true. Now, that will be also a game, but what uh, makes the book a masterpiece uh, is this flow of elements, real or imaginary or both, that. Uh, comes uh, to Zeno's consciousness from the unconscious. Now, for English-speaking uh, um, uh, audience today, uh, they will probably ask themselves, but where did we see this before? And that's, of course, uh, uh, Ulysses of uh, James Joyce. It's uh, this flow of pieces of uh, unconscious care coming to, to the consciousness. Uh, and the fact is, Svevo and Joyce were uh, great friends. 
uh, Ulysses was published one year before Zeno's conscience, but uh, they really wrote the two novels together, which are full of allusions uh, uh, to each other. Now, uh, at the end of the day, if we understand one thing from Zeno's conscience, uh, is that Zeno's conscience, not consciousness, conscience, fails to work as a moral compass. Although he achieves or pretends he has achieved, uh, remember, supposedly is lying for the benefit of the doctor, some material success. In fact, uh, Zeno uh, acts without a real moral conscience in the four fields the novel is about, health is uh, tobacco addiction, love and business, and for these reasons, uh, he uh, morally uh, fails and understands he has failed. I believe that uh, Dr. Hong, who has made himself heard about conscience, of course, all over the world, uh, will be remembered in history for having rescued conscience for, from the problems uh, uh, Svevo was immersed in when he wrote the novel, because it was not only about Freud, but before Freud, Marx and Nietzsche had also attacked the conscience. Uh, they, these three, uh, Marx, Nietzsche and Freud, say don't trust the conscience, because the conscience is not what you believe. It's not something natural and native, but it's something artificially created inside us by social forces. And uh, may they be the family or the bourgeoisie or the envy of the weak or the strong, that's Nietzsche. Uh, these social forces are not well intentioned. So all these uh, theoreticians or ideologues say you should not uh, trust uh, the conscious. But uh, Svevo's Zeno, with his complicated relationship with psychoanalysis, is an unforgettable embodiment of what happens when you are persuaded by the ide ideologies and you no longer trust your conscience. So these people, and that doesn't only apply in the novel to uh, Zeno, but also to his friends and uh, relatives, they believe they are very modern, sophisticated intellectuals. But in the end, uh, without conscience, they have nothing to impose an order on the chaos of consciousness. And so they end up in moral bankers. So enter Dr. Hong, and he tells us a simple truth that we should forget the ideologists and come back to conscience and say yes to conscience, yes to the fact that the conscience is our moral compass. Ideologists, as we know from the tragedies of the 20th century, and unfortunately are seeing again in these very days, in the 21st, uh, by obfuscating conscience, create war and the instruction. And on the other end, as Dr. Hong says, only those who recognize the central role of conscience can build a, a civilization of peace and love. Now, Zeno lives in a difficult time and ultimately does not succeed in recovering his conscience, but uh, uh, he uh, and his friends uh, have opportunities to recover their conscience, but uh, uh, they don't take them. And when do these opportunities come? They come when they are confronted with uh, suffering and uh, the world's uh, uh, injustice. And here I believe it's another uh, lesson and another comparison with the Taiji Men case. The modern 
Western world has lost <clears throat> the notion of conscience because it is incapable to answer the question what conscience is. Now, in fact, we know to define a notion, we need to understand its contrary. It's easy to understand what hot means because we have a nation of cool. So to understand the conscience, we need to have an idea and possibly also an experience of lack of conscience. Now, Dr. Hong and his busy had the very painful experience of what lack of conscience is. The lack of conscience of corrupted bureaucrats and officers created Taiji Men case. But the great the Buddhist sage Nagaryuna wrote in his great perfection of wisdom that the greatest master is the one capable of changing poison into medicine. And it is because they experienced the poison of the lack of conscience that Dr. Ong and his Dizzy were able to administer to the world the good medicine of conscience. And the fact that we are here today to celebrate the International Day of Conscience proves that this medicine has been remarkably effective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Intervenia, for reminding us how central for civilization, for a, a just a civilization, a humane civilization, a civilization of peace and love, as the Taiji man is trying to promote, is, is uh, central. And, uh, and conscience is the pivotal uh, um, pillar of that. Uh, a, a true understanding of, of conscience is a pivotal pillar of that civilization that is yet to be built. Our second panelist today is Mr. Stephen Enada, Executive President of International Committee of the International Committee on Nigeria. Mr. Enada, the floor is yours. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Uh, sorry, I was thinking uh, I had a one hour difference in a way, so time changed here, so that is uh, my problem. Now, I, I am glad and happy every time I uh, come to forum like this, because one, you can see that uh, many people, millions of Africans, millions of African Americans are concerned about what is happening to, in the case of the Taiji men. Now, my, my idea has been that of uh, pragmatism. Yes, it is good to intellectualize, but uh, pragmatically, we have to take our intellectualism to the marketplace where people uh, uh, find some kind of robust idea and robust interaction where we will now advance this case. Imagine you Google uh, tidy men, all you see, you see about injustice being meted to them. And in all our ideation, what has happened? So now we are even talking about uh, the day of conscience in honor of the Taiji men. Yes, it's good to uh, promoting a culture of peace with love and conscience. That is very correct. Now I ask myself, my own conscience in regard to Taiji men case, Yes, I represent a lot of people who are religiously persecuted in Africa and also even people who are persecuted here in the United States, which I am part of. So the question we need to begin to ask ourselves is that is the United Nations doing the right thing to prod and bring up people's conscience in regard to Taiji men? Now, like we all know, uh, yes, uh, the day of conscience is to be conscious of the need for the creation of conditions of stability and well-being and peaceful and friendly relations based on respect of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language, and religion. The General Assembly declared 5th April the International Day of Conscience. And after that, what? Where is the conscience 
for the Taiji men. What is the United Nations doing? So uh, most religions believe that the conscience is the voice of God or the transcendent. The supreme being or what the Abrahamic faith tradition referred to as God is speaking to individuals, guiding them to do the right in a given situation. Conscience can be described a moral sense of right and wrong. A conscience must be educated as an undeducated conscience can make a wrong decision. And the Taiwanese government for me has an uneducated conscience by not giving justice to the Taiji men. So, and this is a tragedy of our inaction. The stormy year of 1996 was when the fabricated Taiji men case began. We all know that. There has been one mistake after another committed by the Taiwanese government. There are more than hundreds of articles and dozens of books and conferences and seminars to advocate for this lawless crackdown. Yes, I give credit to lawyers and civil society organizations holding forth the light for the Taiji men, but that is not enough. We have not bust the egos of Taiwanese government and their allies and those who actually are perpetrating this injustice with them. And I've just discovered that uh, justice cannot just be, uh, justice is demanded, acted upon, and we must pursue it. And I'm telling you, we need to build momentum. We need to bring all our ideas to this marketplace of advocacy where we will begin to say, this is done, justice must be done. Tai Taiji men case is important. And I'm excited because if we get justice for Taiji men, then we are going to get justice for others from Venezuela to Africa. So we should come together now. And the truth of the matter, I want to be in Washington DC today and say, this is the day of uh, conscience and what is United Nations doing about the Taiji men? What are the US Congress doing? And you are still dealing with the Taiwanese government. When we talk about freedom, justice is being denied the Taiji men. Nobody is speaking like that and nobody will speak except those of us here organize ourselves into that cohesive voice. Taiji men have been vindicated, but where is a conscience from the United Nations and the global community to bring about national compensation and strike at wrongful prosecution of Taiji men? The reason is because we think justice is freely given. No, it must be demanded. So now we should, by virtue of all of these timeline faces that provide us opportunity to engage, begin to go to where it matters so that they hear us. And if they don't respond, we go again, we knock at the door. That is what we do, especially in the US Senate and Congress and even in the USA department. It is not about placarding. It's not about, hey, type. no, it's about engaging consciously, face to face, asking questions. Where is justice? And if there are no justices done for these people, then there should be sanction. These are actually international instruments to bring about justice for those whose justice have been denied. Promises have been broken and there is lack of will to act by international community. From European parliament to every, uh, to Every government and trilateral organizations, I can tell you, they lack the will to act on behalf of the Taiji men. The international community lack the will. In the last 26 years, it can be said that the declaration of the UN General Assembly of 5th April, the International Day of Conscience remained the litmus test for the UN because Taiji men is not a cram school. It's never, it's never a cram school. It appears big interests in Taiwan don't want justice for the Taiji men. Therefore, we need to disrupt the big interests. And what this means is to organize our collective effort into one voice. 
Yes, this is a voice for the Taiji men, but the voice must be taken to the market square, must be taken to the policy space, must be taken to intergovernmental organizations, must be taken to the civil society sphere of influence. And we have it from Europe, even to Africa, to US, we have it. So we, uh, 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 we must make the Taiji men case be much more than just intellectual ideation, but a movement that will rally common interest into a momentum that will make our advocacy on behalf of Taiji men irrepressible. We are at the right time to mobilize and build strong connections to provoke global community to take action on behalf of the Taiji men case. And that is the reason I'm here today. Thank you so much. I strongly believe that uh, we all, ha all have to learn from the energy that our African friends show when they share causes. And I do thank you, Mr. Anada, for the passion he, 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 he used today to, to describe many things, but at least two important points. One is the failure of the international community, and the second one is that Taiji men is not a problem of Taiji men, a problem of Taiwan, a problem of, a problem of the Taiwanese people, but Taiji men is a center uh, problem for all those who have who, who care about freedom, justice, and truth. Thank you, Mr. Anada. Our third panelist for the first session of this webinar today is. Uh, in Italian, uh, Mr. Mario De Paolo he, Paoli. He is a, a, an attorney and he is a member of the committee Fede Insieme, F Faith Together, who has been founded by our good friend Francesco Curto, who shared this, this floor before in previous webinars. So, Mr. De Paoli, De Paoli the floor is yours. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Before starting my speech, uh, I want to thank uh, CESNUR and Human Rights Without Frontiers for the invitation to participate in, in this important webinar. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Mario De Paoli, an Italian lawyer in Turin, and a new member of the Fed Insieme Committee create, created by my colleague, Tony Francesco Curto. Uh, over the years, I have dedicated myself to studying the themes related to different religions as well as their persecution. Uh, I have heard a lot and positively about Taj Mand and Dr. Long, and uh, thanks uh, to Professor Introvigne and to Quattoni Curto, I have studied the legal and tax issues they had to confront for a long time. I followed with great interest your previous webinars and appreciated the important contents brought by the speaker. For me, today is a real honor to be here with you. Uh, today, uh, April the 5th, is the International Day of Conscience, a day in which we are called to become, to become aware of the long series of mistakes that have been committed by Humanity Tower itself based on a competitive and individualistic logic seeking economic gains only. Uh, this faulty logic is just one of the motivations that drive humans to reject conscience and act against each other. Uh, this, we, are, we all agree, is a time in which we must take our choices and act with conscience. If we have not already done so, we should start to treasure the lessons that are abundantly offered to us by life. Look for solutions to the problems we have not yet solved, win the inertia and prejudice that still prevent us from solving these problems. Rectify the failures caused by tragedies and try not to find ourselves unprepared for the next challenges. This is a time when we must return to our conscience and face the crisis of a past that is still present. Face the present crisis so they will, will not be repeated in the future and treasure this path to become women and men of conscience. The Taiji Man movement, its founder, Dr. Hong, ever put the team of conscience at the very center of their experience. In fact, many people around the world 
have come to reflect on the central role of conscience precisely because of Dot Hong's rigorous work. Today, International Day of Conscience, however, we must alter Dot Hong's issues called Dizzy and express our solidarity with them. I have a word from them directly. That somebody wants to obstruct your path to conscience education is clear. These obstacles are obvious, and I have manifested themselves through persecution. It is right to pay taxes, to render un unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, as Jesus said, but all everything belongs to Caesar. It was also necessary that the demand of tax authority are reasonable and fair. In the case of Tajman and Dr. Rong, they were not, because what was asked was against the principle of equality and consistency. A new way of persecuting religious and spiritual minorities and their devotees has emerged in modern society. Those in power have learned that if you want to denigrate opponents, discredit them, and then therefore prevent them from operating. And you have to do in a tax audit, followed by tax bill based on creative interpretation, interpretation of tax law. This is what happened to the Taiji movement and to Dr. Ong, who since December the 19, 1996 found themselves in an infernal circle made up of criminal charges, seizure of assets, and long judicial methods. That disciples gave money to a master for the ritual of the red and blue is a well-known modality of giving gifts in Chinese culture. The misunderstanding of the meaning and significance of this ritual by Taiwan tax authorities is, to say the least, absurd. Fortunately for Dr. Hong, the Taiji men women justice has been done, even if in a partial way only. The Cologne Evangel that for the years 1991, 1993, 1994, 1995, and 1996, the right of the right envelopes involved gift and no payment for service. It was an excellent result. Finally, putting things in order. That left out 1992, however, the year for which a ruling gave a different interpretation to the right. But since nothing different happened in 1992 compared to other years, as a lawyer, it seems here clear to me that there, are, there has been a real violation of the principle of equality and the principle of consistency. I want to conclude my recording that all human beings are endowed with conscience and for the reason we must act towards each other with a sincere spirit of brotherhood. Our conscience can show us what is right and what is wrong, what is essential and what is superfluous, what led to peace and love and what this is for us for them. Let us ourselves more often how can we bring value, not economic, but moral and ethical value to our life and to society. This will eventually lead to a resolution of the Taiji main case as well. Thank you, Mr. De Pauli, for adding another important angle to the Taiji main case that we are that we keep on discussing. Uh, at regular times and I do thank you all the the, the panelists that so far uh, shared so many important insights on this again staggering case. It is now, now my pleasure to give the floor to uh, Willy Fautre, director and co-founder of Human Rights Without Frontier in Brussels, Belgium and he will introduce and preside the second session of our webinar today. Willy, Mr. Fautre, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for passing on the torch of freedom that uh, illuminates uh, our engagement uh, for uh, justice in Taiwan in the case uh, of uh, uh, Taiji Band. And as usual, we have a second session where we give the floor to the 
uh, dizzy. And I think it's a precious uh, contribution of the DZ to the debates uh, about uh, the uh, Tai Chi Ben, uh, because from various angles, they share with us their uh, feelings and uh, positive contribution uh, that brought, that uh, Dr. Hong brought in, the, in their life. The first uh, testimony that uh, we will listen to is uh, from uh, Charlotte Lee, a Taiwan uh, lawyer, a uh, human rights observer of the Association of uh, Citizens in uh, Taiwan. And if I, I am well informed, I think that it will be a video because a last minute uh, problem uh, prevented her from being uh, present uh, uh, live uh, in the debate. Tai Chi Men is an ancient Qigong martial art man pie for self-cultivation, and the essence of Tai Chi Men Shi Fu and Di Zi inheritance has never changed. To provide an academy where Di Zi can practice Qigong, Zhang Wenren search for suitable place and set up academy so that Di Zi from all over the world can go to the academy nearby to practice Kung Fu and invite people to join this group. In addition to academy located throughout Taiwan, Zhang Wenren has purchased land piece by piece in the Miao Li Mountains as a reserve land for self-cultivation center. Also, Zhang Wenren purchased the property in the Swiss mountain villa community in New Taipei City and began planning to serve as a gathering facility for a large group of Di Zi. However, in 1996, the political purge and religious sweep had an undue impact on Tai Chi Men. The December 19 incident occurred, caused a series of encroachment on the Tai Chi Men Academy and their land. From December 19, 1996 to March 1997, the prosecutor persecuted illegally, detained Zhang Wenren and his wife, and froze all of their assets. The prosecutor did not investigate whether the property was related to the case but to issue official later freezing 67 plots of land in Miao Li Mountain, Sweet Mountain Villa Community, Da'an Gu Ting Nangang Kaohsiung Academy on Lina Street, Miao Li and Shulin Academy. From November 1997 to May 1998, the NTB imposed bans on the academy one after the other. The NTV levied tax on the basis of false indictment information without investigation. Despite knowing that all of Zhang Wenren and his wife's assets has been frozen and the taxes has been preserved, the NTV prohibited the disposal of the academy and land before the deadline of the tax bill payment or even before Zhang Wenren receiving the tax bill. The Impact Academy and Lands, including the Miao Li, Swiss Mountain Villa Community, Da An Gu Ting Nangang Miao Li Shu Ling and Taichung Academy, the amount prohibited in relation to business tax was even as much as 40 times the original tax amount in the tax bill. In December 1997, moreover, the NTB issued repeated prohibition of disposal to Da An Gu Ting and Nangang Academy. From the November to December in 2003, although the NTV taxation behavior was illegal, Zhang Wenren's property was forced to be used as a guarantee in order to seek administrative relief. The property was equivalent to half of the tax amount, and the property included 57 pieces of land reserved for self-cultivation center in Miao Li Mountain, Swiss Mountain Villa Community, and Farling Academy, Da An Gu Ting Nangang, Miao Li, and Taichung Academy. On July 13, 2007, Tai Chi Men was found to be innocent and owned no taxes, according to the Supreme Court of Criminal Division. Nonetheless, the NTV ignored the court's decision and failed to rescind the tax bill and return the collateral per the law. From October 2008 to December 2009, the NTV imposed excessive prohibition again on the land in Miao Li, Swiss Mountain, Villa Community, Da An Gu Ting, and Nangang Academy, 
and then on Kaohsiung Academy on Lainan Street. From 2009 to 2010, the NTB seals the land reserved for self-cultivation center in Miaoli Mountain, also seal the Da'an and Guting Academy, and then the value of seizure far outweighed the tax bill. In 2019, the enforcement agency seized the Swiss Mountain Villa community, Nangang and Kaohsiung Academy on the Nanan Street, despite the fact that the 1992 tax bill was illegal and wrong, and that the value of the seized land exceeded the amount it wanted to enforce. In 2020, the enforcement agency auctioned the land in Miaoli Mountain and nationalized the land which are served for Taijiman Shifu and Dizi Self-Cultivation Center. Although the sale up was canceled for the rest part of the academy and lands, but the academy and lands could not be used for many years, with the longest period being 23 years, 7 months, and 12 days. It has been demonstrated that Tai Chi Man case was incorrect and false from the start, but the land and the Tai Chi Man Academy has been subject to illegal and compulsory enforcement for more than two decades. The Taiwan government violated the following international human rights standard. First, the prosecutor, the NTB, and the enforcement agency banded together to persecute the freedom of religion or belief. Taijiman has been a member of the Taoism Association of the Republic of China and the Taipei Taoism Association since 1986. Taijiman Academy and Land Reserve for Self-Cultivation Center provide Taijiman Shifu and Deeds with the opportunity to preach and practice Kung Fu which is equivalent to a place or land for religious worship. People have the right to freedom of religion or belief under Article 18 of the ICCPR and General Commons No. 22. Therefore, Taijiman Academy and their reserve land for self-cultivation center are exempt from seizure and auctions under Article 53 and 113 of the Taiwan Compulsory Enforcement Act. Second, the prosecutor and the NTV violate property rights and people's right to subsistence. In 1996, the prosecutor persecuted frozen all of Zhang Menren and his wife assets and prohibited their transfer without investigation whether the property was related to the case. Basic living expense and children's education costs were not overlooked. It was a serious violation of the proportionality principle. In 2002, the control yuan concluded that the prosecutor violated people's property rights and interests and deprived Zhang Menren, his wife, and their family of the basic human right of the property and subsistence guaranteed by the Constitution and ICCPR. In terms of NTB, the court had to rule on legality of prosecutor indictment, which means that the fact has yet to be determined. Third, the administrative enforcement agency violated the proportionality principle. As can be seen from the foregoing, there were no tax issues in the Taijiman case from the start, but the NTV illegally transferred the 1992 tax case to the enforcement agency. The enforcement agency ignored the illegal and incorrect enforcement and seized the Miaoli land in 2009. The value of the Miaoli land seized have exceeded the total amount to be executed. In 2010, the agency ignored previous overseas seizures and seized the Da'an and Guting Academy separately and seized excessively once more. In 2019, the enforcement agency again to seal the Nangang Academy, the Swiss Mountain Villa community, and the Kaohsiung Academy on Lainan Street. Following the illegal taxation, the seizure was carried out one after the other, and the seizure was repeated, which not only violated the proportionality principle, but also violated human rights. Even after Spring Administrative Court recognized Taijiman as a Qigong and martial art manpai 
and after the NTV reduced the taxation bill to zero for years of 1991 and 1993 to 1996, they did not withdraw the enforcement in according to Article 14 of the Tax Collection Act, which violated the principle of equality and consistency. The persecution of illegal and compulsory enforcement by Taiwan government have been ongoing for the past 25 years. The home of the Swiss Mountain Villa community has become ruin that cannot be restored due to the ravage of time. The Kaohsiung Academy on Lennon Street was also forced to close for a long time the building was in disappear. Miaoli intended self-cultivation land were also illegally auctioned and nationalized. The precious years of Taiji Men Shifu and deeds had also passed away, and the dream of promoting culture and do good for the world has been delayed. All of the evidence for more than 20 years have proven the incense of Taiji Men Shifu and deeds inheritance, as well as that Taiji Men owned no taxes. A small group of illegal officials had kidnapped the entire system and violated people's freedom of thought, belief, religions, and cultural life choices. For no reason, innocent Taiji Men Shifu and Dizi had suffered such huge losses. It is the most serious injustice in Taiwan legal and tax system. The government must no longer tolerate a few lawbreakers. It should correct the case and punish the illegal official so that people can truly enjoy the basic human rights guaranteed by the International Human Rights Covenant and Taiwan Constitution. Thank you for the listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Charlotte, <clears throat> Charlotte Lee, for summarizing so clearly the, the main historical uh, steps of the conflict between um, the National Tax Bureau and uh, Taiji Men. And I will now introduce our second uh, witness, uh, Chuk Sheng, uh, product manager, ICT industry. And his contribution is uh, titled uh, uh, no matter how busy you are, don't forget to plan how to say goodbye to the world. And it's a very interesting and original uh, contribution that we will share with him. Hey, thanks for Mr. Willy for Trace introduction. Hello, everyone. Today, first, I'd like to share with you an experience that rarely people uh, rarely happened to most people in their lives. Once I was playing by a creek when I was very young. I remember vividly that there were a lot of tires in the creek which were meant to be used as swimming rings. I was very excited for the first time I learned that tires could be used as swimming rings. So I grabbed a big tire and jumped into the water to play. Suddenly, in a moment when no one noticed, I just slipped my hands and fell through the big hole in the middle of the tire. I struggled stream back to the surface, but the harder I tried, the deeper I sank. I was so scared and never forget what I went through at that moment. I looked at the sunbeam shining through the water and almost decided to give up the struggle and went for death. Luckily, when I tried again with the last hope, my foot suddenly hooked on a tire and I got to pull myself out of the water. Ever since that day, I have always known that human beings are very powerless when faced with death. And I also know that although I was lucky to survive that day, I still have to leave this world one day. I remember during a class in college, my teacher asked everyone, what is the meaning of life? Some of my classmates answered to make a lot of money. Some said to enjoy with a lot of fun and some said to leave a legacy of great achievements. When it was my turn, I said, to leave to prepare for death. This is something we will all experience, right? As I am speaking now, 
each of us is two minutes closer to the end of our lives. So how exactly should we prepare for this? Everyone's answer should be different. But I know when we face death without any fear, that is when we are ready. This is easy to say, but when it happens, most people cannot do it easily. So I'm so grateful to have two people in my life who have inspired me deeply on this matter. The first one is Mr. Jian Yongsong. He was a victim of Taiwan's white terror incident when he was young. After he was released from prison, he became the first founder of Amnesty International's Taiwan chapter. He had been fighting for human rights all his life. He was very knowledgeable and owned the most patents in finance in Taiwan and was also an owner of a company. However, Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau imposed illegal nearly $2.5 million taxes on him based on an explanation letter that had been abandoned. Mr. Jan exhausted all means to try to rectify the unjust tax and the human rights persecution he suffered. In the meantime, he also called loudly for Taiwanese government to implement the human rights of taxation. Not long before Mr. Jan passed away, I met him on an occasion on the street. And that day, I always remember, he exclaimed loudly, I will continue to fight for the revolution of the Ministry of Finance. My son will continue after my death. And my grandson will continue after my son's death. Everyone was in awe upon hearing his righteous voice on the spot. From Mr. Jeb, I saw a man who worked faithfully for his mission, lived fully to life, and finally left this world with a clear conscience. He earns everyone's respect. The other one I would like to share is my grandmaster, Dr. Hong Dao, the head of Tai Chi Man. My grandmaster has devoted his life to promoting the conscious culture of love and peace. He led us to more than 100 countries on five continents and held love and peace summits around the world, inspiring leaders from all over the world to realize their peace wishes. I also, uh, he also was one of major contributors to the birth of the United Nations International Day of Conscience on April 5th in 2019. For decades, my grandmaster has worked tirelessly to promote world love and peace and kept in touch with many leaders in the world. Leaders from all fields around the world all acknowledged and pressed my grandmaster's ideas were very important to the world today. But in Taiwan, like Mr. Jian, my grandmaster and us disciples have also been persecuted by the state violence for many years. In 1996, when Taiwan conducted its first democratically elected president, Prosecutor Lin wrote in a book, Victims of Truth, afterwards that the ruling party was trying to knock down many religious groups after the election, and the Tai Chi Man was one of them. At that time, Prosecutor Ho Kuan-ren used illegal means to create false evidence and false witness to sue my master because he had no factual evidence for his indictment. And the IRS issued an exorbitant tax bill according to the illegal indictment without conducting any investigation in accordance with the correct procedures. Even though the Supreme Court ruled that there was no crime and no tax due was confirmed, the National Taxation Bureau still sent the illegal tax bills to be enforced. And the sacred land that my grandmaster prepared for our practice was lost illegally auctioned off by the government and taken into state ownership. Over the years, while preaching love and peace, my master has also led us to defend justice and righteousness. We have seen that human rights in Taiwan are a sham, and not only have the persecutions that occurred during the past democratic transformation not being vindicated. But illegal taxation is still widespread 
even today. My master once told us that what cultivators are afraid of is the judgment of heaven. Therefore, even though the NTB had lowered the tax amount and asked, asked us to pay, my master still insisted on abiding by the law, not paying less tax than what was due and not paying even a single cent tax that was not due. My master is the most consistent person I've ever met. Even though he encountered great hardships, he still persevered with his conscience, led us to stick to doing the right thing. I believe that when we can do this in our life, and life is conflict, and there's no fear of life and death. As a child, God gave me a chance to experience the end of my life, and Mr. Jen and my master told me how to prepare for this day. I found that when we continue to focus our attention and our conscience, happiness will come from within, no matter how great the difficulties and the trial is, or in this way, we will find that every moment of life will be full of meaning. That's all my sharing today, and thank you for your listening, and happy International Day of Conscience. Thank you um, very much, Chek Sheng, for sharing with us your thoughts about life uh, and death. Uh, thoughts that have been inspired by the founder of uh, Amnesty International in uh, Taiwan, human rights defender, and also uh, Dr. Hong, who have the set common point uh, uh, to have been both victims of the national uh, taxation bureau. And now I will give the floor to the next witness, who is uh, Lung Ogle. Lung Ogle is, uh, well, we have common points uh, without knowing each other. She's a teacher. Uh, she was a teacher, I was a teacher, she was uh, uh, teaching English, I was teaching English, and we are both retired. So, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Lung Ogle, the floor is yours, and I like your smile. There a technical problem. She had been online before. Waiting. For the Hello, everybody. My, I'm Olong Ogo. What I'm going to say on this particular day, the International Day of Conscience, are reminders of time and just came. I hope that my voice will be heard and will be awaken the conscience of, Taijiman, of Taiwanese government and a handful of lawless officials encourage them to do the right thing. Taijiman Qigong Academy is a spiritual culture and, um, and a cultural and spiritual culture group based on Taoism wisdom found in 1966 by Dr. Hong Daozi. The Academy seeks to advance physical, mental, and spiritual health and to awaken people's concern. Dr. Hong and Tai Jiman Dizi have visited to 101 countries promoting love and peace and education of concerns. As he is strongly convinced that concern is the most important well being of the heart that enables people to resolve conflicts. In 2014, Dr. Hong initiated and promoted a movement of era of conscience. On July 25, 2019, during the 73rd section of UN General Assembly, the UN adopted a draft submitted by the, King, uh, by the Kingdom of Bahrain and designated April the 5th as the International Day of Conscience. 
Tai Chi Minh has been fighting justice and human rights almost 26 years. Tai Chi Minh Dizi have visited Taipei Economic Cultural Office in different states, meeting with directors of different office and explaining the Tai Chi Minh and Just K. At the same time, we requested that a letter to appeal the Unjust case be presented to the government of Taiwan. On December the 5th and the 9th in 2021, a group of 55 Tai Chi Minh Dizi visited Washington, D.C. the first the third time. The youngest one is 10 and I'm, I was 80. We protested in front of Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, and the Washington uh, Mount, uh, Monument and the White House, hoping our voice be heard. During our stay in DC, we conducted a forum with Dr. Introvers present and um, at JW uh, Mar Marriott on December the 6th, 2021. And the press conference also with Dr. Introvers present at the Tribal Leader Conference Center on December the 7th, 2021, to present and support the Tai Chi Minh and Chesuke. For me, all this trip was very stressful, but very rewarding. I consider myself very fortunate to have a chance to get involved in this activity. Tai Chi Minh fraud case came unexpectedly on December 19, 1996, when He Huanyin was investigating Tai Chi Minh with his fraud accusation, he irrationally charged Tai Chi Minh with racing doubling and tax evasion. In handling Tai Chi Minh case, the Taxation Bureau never conducted detailed investigation and instead adopted material from the prosecutors and the Investigation Bureau as its basis for claiming the legitimate gift known as red envelope for Sufu as a form of income, income um, from tuition, an issue in property tax bill. In applying clause of Article 83 of the Coast, Article of uh, Clause 1 of Article 83 of the Tax Code to compel this income before obtaining prior approval from the mission from the Ministry of Finance. The Taxation Bureau violated the requirements of the code procedures. Property rights are also protected under Article 15 of Constitution. Yet the, tax, uh, the Taxation Bureau ignored the fact that Tai Chi Minh Zhang Menyan and his wife's assets has been has been frozen shortly after the investigation by Ho Kwan Yen in 1996, an issue prohibitory injunction on handling assets. For over 20 years, Zhang Menyan was unable to freely deal with his process, with his uh, uh, assets. Their most basic living rights and property rights were infringed upon. Human rights were violated. Tai Chi Minh and Just K handed on July 13, 2007, with a verdict of owning no taxes and not guilty of all charges. According to the law, the Taxation Bureau must denote all improper tax bills, yet the Tai Chi Minh and Just K is still going on. For 20, almost 26 years, the National Bureau has inflicted massive destruction about Tai Chi Minh. Tai Chi Minh is a site for teaching and his meditation center is for spiritual cultivation. Based on principle of international covenant on civil and political rights and international covenant on economic, social and cultural rights. And the provision of compulsory enforcement act, article 15 and 113, places for worship and meditation shall not close down or uh, auction up. On August 21st, 2020, however, the National Bureau and the Office of Enforcement first attempted to auction up and then nationalize Tai Chi Minh Self Conservation Center. 
on the evening of September, September 18, 2020, the office officer arrested and took in custody a 60 year old volunteer of tax legal reform league who simply held a picket sign with a slogan supporting Tai Chi Minh and just came on it. His right to life and safety has been violated. President Chai, how can you allow a handful of laws officials to rob citizens of their property and let police officer bully and arrest innocent citizens? The government should protect taxpayers' interests and human rights. These cases should not have happened in Taiwan, now known as a democratic nation ruled by law. They remind me of two, a, two, two, a incident on sep, September, uh, February 28, 1947, a famous political persecution in Taiwan. For next 38 years from 1949 to 1992, the island suffered from what was known as the white terror. Under the authoritarian leadership, the people of Taiwan has no freedom of speech and live in fear. The government repressed individual freedom and arbitrarily seized private property, engaged economic mismanagement, oust current cor corrupt tax and judicial system, mirror high-handed attitude of the period of white terror. Let's stop history from repeating itself. We need a tax and judiciary reform to encourage the corrupt official to admit their mistake and redress Tai Chi Minh and just cake and return our South, uh, South Cultivation Center. We believe in the promising future of our country, Taiwan. Let's stand unit, united to rebuild Taiwan and make it a truly democratic nation. Thank you. And thank you, dear colleague, <laughs> for your conclusions in, the, in four points that I can uh, so summarize. First, a tax and a judiciary reform is absolutely needed. Two, the apologies of the National Taxation Bureau for their so-called mistakes, I would say corruption, uh, three, the redress of the Taiji Man case, and for the restitution of the auction uh, property. And uh, the next speaker is uh, Damon Tsai, Senior Director of uh, Product Management, the American Semiconductor Company. Mr. Tsai, the floor is yours. And I also see that we have some common points, but I will detail it at the end. Okay, thank you, Billy. Uh, this is the Damon. I'm happy to be here. I'm not retired yet, but I think we are all on the cross side of fighting for the human right and the conscience and the protect and the promote the idea of a love and peace. I think we are also the colleagues. So uh, I think today is the International Day of the Conscience claimed by the United Nations. And it's also a very special day for me because um, I'm the witness and participate the birth of United Nations International Day of the Conscience. So I still remember about uh, three years ago, back to the 2019. So we have the event in the United Nations in Vienna. So uh, back then, I think uh, I remember is also the April 5th, 2019, the three months before the Bahrain resolution was officially adopted by the United Nations to declare the International Day of the Conscience. So we are in the Vienna and with the, His Excellency, the Dr. Yusuf Abdulkarim, a bachelor, permanent minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations, and also His Excellency, Mr. Anthony Carmano, former president of the Trinidad and the Tobago. And we also have many different um, distinguished guests from the world. We are celebrate together. Celebrate for what? Because the United Nations held the global launch of the International Day of the Conscience together. And I still remember I was the host for that event 
So when I was on the stage, I look at everyone from different world and speaking the conscience, speaking about their action, how they can promote the idea of the conscience. I think that I'm just feel very touching. And also I think it's very difficult to get all people together for the single goal. I think that is beautiful. So that's why three years back, I think that is the most, uh, one of the most one of wonderful day in my life. So I also remember our first encounter with Ba Ling. That is back to the May uh, 2017. When Dad Hong was invited by His Royal Highness, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Siam Al Khalifa to visit Ba Ling for the cultural exchange of love and peace. And I am lucky because I had the opportunity to participate with the Dad Hong. Although it was the month of the Ramadan, that means the almost the old stores, museum, national theaters, and the monuments are all closed. However, for Dada Hong's visit, the Baharlin government sent someone to show us around every place. So every place was closed, but they just opened the door for us. So I, I think um, in addition to the meeting with the Minister of the Culture, they also arranged the various religious leaders to gather together and exchange with each other, allowing us to experience the diversity of Baha'u'llah's culture and religious belief in just three days. Meanwhile, we also share how Taiji men travel uh, to the five continent, how we promote the love and peace through the cultural exchange to broad the movement of the era of conscience that the host just mentioned at the beginning, launched back to the 2014. So when we visit the the people we met, we all stitched them a post that uh, is the post for the international uh, day of the conscience. So uh, this right hand sign, uh, this means our conscience, you and me, and this one means protect our conscience, protect the world's conscience. So we do this post, we take the picture together, we share the idea how to uh, reflect the conscience in our daily life. That is the main purpose when we visit the Bahling and uh, uh, exchange our experience. So what impressed me the most was that uh, we could see the temples and the church of different religions at every intersection on the street, street. And the country was willing to make such a great effort to preserve the cultural diversity and the tolerance. But even so, it received us with humbleness and the respect and kept asking us what more could be done for the further promote and the realization of the love and peace. I was impressed by such an attitude, whatever it takes to make things better. And I also feel deeply like that every culture should be protected and promoted by the government with all its effort. However, just like we discussed today, from the Taijuman case, I saw the Taiwanese government's whatever it takes attitude, but that was used in the wrong place, wrong direction, trying to kill an ancient Qigong martial art practice and culture like Taijimen. So I think uh, we also see the video uh, uh, in the beginning of the conference, the prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren fabricated the charges through false witness and the false evidence, false accusation of rising gobblings, wrongful detention, forcing brothers and sisters to confess crimes they have never committed to even overstepping his authority to order local government to, to cut off the water electricity supply to Taijiman facility. He's doing everything he can to crush the Taijiman. For what? To create an illusion that he's the hero to increase his media presence for his own interest and use the false witness accused Taijiman is crime school that alleged tests evasion and transfer illegal indictment to tax bureau for illegal taxation. The NTB has also turned blind eyes to the fact that all three criminal trials has acquitted the defendants, declaring the innocent of tax evasion and all other charges. The fact that the red envelope is tax exempted gift and didn't revoke the illegal tax bill in accordance with the court verdict and the law. I remember in one conference, 
I saw that the former Control Yuan Commissioner Chen Ling Hui Jun ever mentioned in one, I quote what he said. You can visit the Control Yuan's website where I indicate the seven points of relative fiction with each what our NTB reply. They just simply said, oh, we made a mistake. And then what? They do nothing. And in 2011, she also told the former finance minister that this case should be closed already, but they just didn't listen. They didn't listen and they didn't care. The experts and the scholars can help, but wonder whether it is because of the tax bonus that they are so determined to deny their mistake, ignore the fact and ignore the request of over 300 legislators to revoke the tax penalties due to the illegal tax bill. The administrative enforcement agency, which is also entitled to the performance bonus, insists on auction off Taijiman's sacred land from Miao Li, which is clearly illegal and unwanted. I also remember the day they announced the auction and the seized I was there. It's hard. There's a lot of the people, including Taijiman Dizi, experts, scholars, the people who really care about this case, just stand outside. We are sprouting and we are so sad. So when we heard the announcement, I was very sad and upset and very disappointed with our government. Why such a group respected by the heads of the state internationally, be treated like this in its own country? How can our government officials break the law, violate the human rights when evidence is so obvious? The purpose of International Day of the Conscience is to create conditions for stability, well-being, and peaceful and friendly relations based on the respect for the human rights and the fundamental freedoms of all people. I would like to ask the Taiwan officials who handled the Taijiman case, do you believe from the bottom of your heart you did the right thing? Did you really make the society more stable and peaceful by doing so? Is it for welfare of the people or for your own personal gain? Today on this day, I think scenery call the Taiwanese government officials and President Tsai to take the concrete actions by returning Taijiman sacred land and revoking the illegal tax bill and wrongful tax penalties issued to Taijiman. Only in this way, can people truly trust the government? Can we promote a social stability, harmony, rather than obscene to the purpose of the International Day of Conscience? Finally, I would like to share the story with you. One night in Berlin, we were invited by the president of the prime minister office, the Sheikh Hussam, to his residence. Not only did they treat the Dada Hong like a good old friend, but they also introduced their family members to us, invite us to drink the very special local coffee, and also prepared a spontaneous dinner for us. In the conversation with the Dr. Hong, he asked, you have traveled to so many countries in the world to promote love and peace. How do you operate? Especially, this requires a lot of the human, material, financial resource, how to do it and even last for more than 20 years. So Dada Hong replied with a smile. It's all because they volunteer their time and the money. I just remember he seems so shocked and asked, really, you can just do that? I think that is because in the bottom of our heart, our willing, our believing, we are doing the right thing to the world. And I think especially for April 5th, the International Day of the Conscience. I, I think today I'm very happy I'm here to speak out what I'm thinking, what I'm doing in the past. But moving forward, 
I also hope our Taiwan government, the President Tsai, can really fix the problem. Start with the Taijuman case, a case already sustained for over 20 years. There's no human right if we cannot fix the Taijuman case. So that is my sharing for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Damon. And uh, you, I see that you were really privileged not only to attend, but to participate in the, the resolution uh, about the UN uh, International Day of uh, Conscience. And I will come back to what I had said, but not develop at the beginning, is that we also have some uh, points in, in common. First, you went to Bahrain. I also went to Bahrain. Second, you met the prime minister. I also met the prime minister. <laughs> and for the third point, I will uh, first, um, that we have in common, I will just quote uh, what, what you said in your presentation. You said, what impressed me the most was that we could see temples and churches of different religions at every intersection on the street and that country was willing to make such a great effort to preserve cultural diversity and tolerance. I was there, in fact, to make a, uh, for a mission to make some investigation about religious tolerance in, in Bahrain. And so uh, I had the opportunity to visit various uh, uh, places of worship. And what I learned, that's one more detail that I will add to your personal experience, is that what I learned from that mission, and I was really surprised, is that um, the authorities were giving plots of land, giving, so a gift, it was a gift, plots of land to other religions to build their own uh, places of worship. And I think that was absolutely a tremendous discovery uh, for me, because we have, uh, um, let's say, stereotypes about Muslim countries that are um, intolerant to us, uh, Christians and so on and so on, which is not the case of uh, Bahrain. So we share that same experience and discovery of the tolerance uh, of the Bahraini uh, authorities. Thank you very much for your contribution. And, and then, oh yes, by the way, I can send you my report uh, about uh, that, uh, that issue. If in the, in the chat room, uh, you, you write your email address, I will send you the link later, later today. And uh, our next speaker now is uh, Jennifer Hung. She has a PhD in uh, business administration. And she titled the uh, contribution, and I quote, listen to the call of conscience and face mistakes with courage. <laughs> Thanks, Willy. Hi, everybody. Yes, many people we ask why Apple Fizz is the International Day of Conscience. Today, I would like to share you with the origin story and the process of the International Day of Conscience. For a long time, Dr. Hong has been leading Taiji Mandizi from all over the world to promote the concept of a cultural peace with love and conscience at the 2017 World Leader Summit of Love and Peace. The president of Kiribati, his Excellency Mr. Momo gave a speech. And during the dinner, we met the ambassador of the Kiribati to the UN, Mr. Shito, which start our special friendship. In 2018, we contacted ambassador Mr. Shito to see if there was an opportunity to work together. He, immediate, he immediately agreed to it. Ambassador told us, she, he, he served as the president of Kiribati for two terms before serving the ambassador of Kiribati to the UN. Why he accept as the ambassador to the UN? Because he wanted to help spread more awareness of his country suffering from climate change and the idea of love and peace. He knows that Serving as the UN ambassador will help him get more resources and attention. On the date of the conference, April 5th, 2018, a total of 32 countries, including 22 missions to the UN and one consulate, participated in a meeting to explore 
how to change the world through global partnership to create a sustainable world. At the beginning of the conference, Ambassador Shito praised Dr. Hong in front of the full audience of ambassadors, representatives, and the guests, saying that Dr. Hong, and I think you are the modern Confucius. At the end of the conference, Ambassador Shito and Dr. Hong launched the preliminary version of the resolution, which Ambassador Shito proposed to continue to study and discuss with staff of the mission to the UN in the hope that this resolution could be sent to the UN General Assembly for voting. On the very same day, Ambassador Shido and Dr. Hong host a night of love and peace culture in the evening. From July 2nd to 6, 2018, Ambassador Mr. Shito, Dr. Hong, and some Tajiman deeds, including me, and the expert who is familiar with how to write UN resolution. We had a five day long discussion on completing the first version of resolution, promoting a culture of peace with love and conscience. To gain more support from mission to the UN for this resolution, we decided to hold an informal discussion meeting on July 31st, 2018. We invited the staff of the mission to the UN to come to discuss and exchange their views on this first draft of this resolution. A total of 19 missions were representative at this meeting and the discussion went lively. On the date, on the date, Mr. Benjamin, the representative of St. Keith's and Navy's missions, showed her support on behalf of Ambassador His Excellency St. Condor. She was so she was also curiously why Epophis was children as the International Day of Conscience and asked if there was any special meaning. Dr. Hong replied late. It was the same day late. Many UN ambassadors gathered for discussion for the first time. A good start is crucial to success. It also symbolizes a partnership for sustainable global development through which cooperations can continue to spread the goodwill and positive energy of peace. From April 5th to July 31st, a total of 31 UN missions joined the primary task of promoting world peace. In order to share this resolution to more world leaders, ambassadors, and NGOs, we participated in the 67 UNDPI NGO conference and held a side meeting. We held three more meetings during the 33 session of the UN General Assembly from September 28 to October 1st, 2018. Shortly after, we flew to Austria and held a meeting at the Vienna Hotel with UN ambassadors of Vienna and Australia dignitaries on October 2018. In November 2018, we participated in the, 60, in the 19 Global Chief Justice Conference. At the end of November 2018, Dr. Hong led members of Taiji Men to visit the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the Prime Minister of Bahrain, Prince Arifa, personally hosted the group. On February 6, 2019, we co organized a meeting with the mission of Equatorial Guinea to the UN and invite the president of Equatorial Guinea to bring the bell of world peace and love. On February 6, we co-organized another meeting with the mission of Bahrain to the UN. In April 2019, we flew to Australia again with the support from mission of Bahrain in Vienna. We invited more ambassadors and dignitary from various country to hold a meeting at the UN in Vienna and co-host a dinner to seize every opportunity 
to promote and endorse the Declaration of International Death of Conscience. In June 2019, the Prime Minister Office Chairman of Bahrain asked us to send over the resolution. Bahrain was planning to send the resolution to the General Assembly for voting. On July 1st, the Kingdom of Bahrain submit the resolution to the United Nations. The resolution was voted on and de declared in the hold of the United Nations during General Assembly on July 26, 2019. From late, the date April 5th become known as the International Day of Conscience. From April 2018 to April 2019, a year, we held a total 15 World Leader Summit of Love and Peace. I went to 11 of them. You must think I was the one who had been to many meetings, right? But in fact, I'm not. There was only one person who participated in all 50 meetings, and there was my grandmaster, Dr. Hong. I have witnessed Dr. Hong's incomparable perseverance, step by step, do everything repeatedly, or to produce the final resolution. Despite the non-stop traveling to promote the love, peace, and conscience across the United States, Europe, Asia, Dr. Hong's hard work and success engraved in my mind and told me a lifelong lesson. However, Taijiman, such a good group have been persecuted in Taiwan for more than 25 years. Why is a group that promotes nothing but love, peace, and conscience under such long persecution? It has because of Taiwan formal authoritarian system. Up to now, the injustice Taijiman test case is still not resolved yet. For more than 9,000 states, we Taijiman did has spent countless time, energy, and effort on this long lawsuit. I don't understand why we have to be persecuted by such false fault accusation and are not allowed to enjoy practice Qigong fully. In all this meeting, we have held many people ask, what is conscience? When people have different views, when people's interests conflict, who do we listen to? Every single time, Dr. Hong is brand. Everyone is born with a conscience. When you meditate, you will feel your heart, kindness, warmth, and peace. You may ask, how do you meditate? How do you have a calm mind? It is not about arguing about who is right or wrong, not about who gets the most benefits, but about discovering the greed and the persistence led lead to these external problems. Today, we hope those officials in Taiwan can listen to their conscience, remove the greed and corruption, and face their mistakes courageously. We look forward to one day when Taiwanese government can take this case seriously and return justice to Taiji men. Thank you all. Thank you. Jennifer Hang, uh, for sharing with us your personal experience of the delivery of the baby called International Day of uh, Conscience and uh, underlying the role that Bahrain and Kiribati uh, have played in, the, in, in that process. You worked a lot on the front line, as I could uh, uh, hear of this uh, battle and you saw how long it is uh, how difficult, how complicated it is to uh, promote and put uh, in, in stone and write in stone, in fact, uh, a, a principle like uh, the day of uh, the International Day of uh, Conscience. And uh, you, you have, in, in fact, experienced some form of uh, advocacy. And I'm sure that you have learned a lot from uh, this advocacy uh, process in, in your fight for uh, justice uh, for, for Taiji men. Thank you very much for this uh, experience uh, that you, you lived uh, and took such a long time, uh, of course, to, to be successful. The next speaker is uh, uh, Mitchell Hu, is a student, is he? 
the title of his contribution is Promoting Conscience in Our Chaotic World. Let us be the beacon uh, in the darkness. Very nice title. The floor is yours, Mitchell. Thank you, Willie. Um, hello, guests and online audience. My name is Mitchell. I'm 17 years old. I'm a 12th grade student, and I will be going to college in September of this year. I'm excited that today is the United Nations' International Day of Conscience, and I want to share the importance of conscience and how a world without conscience will only bring disaster. Every conscience of the Every citizen of the world has a responsibility, responsibility to spread positivity and protect their conscience with good deeds for the well-being of humanity. I've been very honored to follow my master, Dr. Hong Daozi, to promote the era of conscience movement. In San Jose, I invited my teachers and classmates to join us to speak conscience and practice conscience. Through the cultural performance of love and peace, I have brought people closer. I've visited many countries to make the International Declaration of Conscience and the Declaration of the Con Era of Conscience known to more people. In particular, I would like to share that when I was 14 years old, I traveled with Dr. Hong Daozi to India to attend the International Conference of Chief Justices of the World. I met many leaders um, of many countries and the leaders of each country is very important because a good thought or bad thought that they have can have a very big impact on the world. So I took the opportunity to promote the Era of Conscience Movement Manifesto. I was most impressed when I met His Excellency Anthony Carmona, former president of Trinidad and Tobago, who told me that he has great respect for Dr. Hong, as he has worked hard to make the world a better place for many years. And he praised Dr. Hong for giving young people like me the opportunity to participate in such important events. Now I wanna talk about the lack of conscience in the world today. I believe everyone knows that the recent Russian-Ukrainian war has been going on for about a month. And I believe that this war was caused by ego and the restless turmoil of the after aftermath of the war, the good thoughts and the evil thoughts will all have a key impact on the world. So we must light up the heart, calm the mind, and pray for the, living, for the world's living beings. The peaceful music soothes the soul, sings the voice of humankind, um, humankind's desire for peace, and let love and conscience inspire the world to process the reflection and to find pure conscience. Next, I want to share a story that happened close to me. My grandfather, the head of a steel company, was a tax victim and framed by dishonest officials. He had been running a steel company for about 46 years and never experienced any sort of tax problems. Hmm. One year, taxation bureau said they wanted an audit. My grandpa took the account books to the bureau and gave them to the official. The official admitted that she lost the account book. The steel company has been a trading business for more than 40 years since its establishment. Only that year was arbitrarily detained by the Taxation Bureau as a processing industry. This caused the tax bill to be four times larger than what it really was. My grandfather rightfully believed that this was unreasonable. He was in, he was in an administrative litigation for five years and 10,000 tax bill plus interest still had to be paid. The Bureau threatened to in another audit if my grandfather filed another appeal. My grandfather suffered a lot physically and mentally. He was so angry that he had a stroke. These, de these deceitful officials completely disregarding the law and the rights of the people. The Taijiman case is another example of innocent people being harmed by corrupt officials. A case that was created out of nothing. We have done all the procedures that can seek legal solutions. The Supreme Court has proven that Taijiman was innocent since July 13th, 2007. This is where the case should have ended. However, the officials of the Tax Bureau did not accept the court's judgment and continued to use the prosecutor's erroneous indictment to issue the wrong tax bill. Even though the Bureau made a public announcement in accordance with the results of the inter 
ministerial meeting with the executive Yuan, the 7,400 pieces of evidence proved that the gift we gave to Sifu was out of respect and not tuition. The gift money is a gift, but Judge Lin Kui Hua of the Taichung High Administrative Court actually made a judgment. When the reporter asked him why he didn't look at the evidence that could have proven Taichung innocent, he said that he actually did, but he was old and forgot. This sort of attitude should not be in our officials that hold su such a high position in such important departments of our government. The only real solution to this problem of false taxation is to root out and severely punish unlawful officials. Finally, I would like to thank Dr. Massimo and all professors, lawyers, experts, scholars, and tax victims at home and abroad. Along this long journey of justice, you stood with us, persisted in doing the right thing and used your professional knowledge to bravely serve justice and support us. Thank you. It is, just, it is not just us who suffer at the hands of corrupt officials. There are thousands of people and we will continue to fight for justice and speak up for the voiceless. April 5th, the International Day of Conscience is a holiday full of hope and positive energy. Reminding, that, reminding people that there is still good in this world. We must hold on to hope, move forward with joy, and live each day with conscience to heal the world. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mitchell. And as you said with your own words, first, uh, uh, Taiji Men provides uh, an open window and an open door to, to the world outside Taiwan. And for you young students, this is very important because it gives a maturity to the growth of, of your conscience. In the second part, I'm really sorry to, for what happened to, to your grandfather, who was also a victim of the National Taxation Bureau. And as you said, there are so many victims in, in Taiwan uh, from that uh, NTB that we should really try to, to find a collective uh, solution uh, beyond the case of uh, Taiwan and beyond the case of uh, the, the, the members of uh, Taiji Men uh, uh, are, are fighting uh, for. So let's again think about it. W what can be done to, to broaden the scope uh, of this fight for, for justice for everybody? Uh, I will now uh, introduce the next speaker who I was told uh, uh, was not in a position to, to be physically present, I would say, uh, <clears throat> on our screen. Uh, it's uh, Jill Wang, a college student, and I think it will be a video instead. Hi everyone, in light of the International Day of Conscience today, I thought about how conscience plays an active role in my life. Oftentimes, due to the abstract nature of conscience, I'm not constantly aware of it. However, upon a deeper examination, I realize that conscience is at the backbone of what I do, how I interact with my peers, family, professors, how I decide to go about my day, and what I hope to achieve as a person in helping others. As a senior in college, my main preoccupations right now are finding a job. Even before that, as a sophomore and junior, I was constantly thinking about what I really want to do when I grow older. I want to be an astronaut when I grow older. That simple, pure ambition of what a child wanted to be often transformed into something more complex and difficult. As you grow older, you learn and absorb more information. You and society start to dictate through formal and informal means what is practical and what isn't. On top of information, the advancement of technology and the internet have allowed the explosion of knowledge and various perspectives. You're lost in your own thoughts, lost in the overflow of information you come across, lost in people's opinions. I was in the same shoes. When I first started college, I was sure I wanted to become a doctor. Then as the years progressed and I hear my friends who are computer science or business majors landing big jobs in big cities, it's hard not to imagine myself in another profession. In times like this, I often find myself resorting to the mindfulness I've learned at Taiji Min. Introspection creates a, a space of serenity and insight into our foundational values and beliefs. 
I realized to stay grounded no matter what profession or career choice, I need to follow my conscience. There likely won't be a decrease in the influx of information in the world, and to truly focus on what can better myself and the world, conscience will be my compass, filtering out bad thoughts. One of the most daunting things as a youth may be the uncertainty of your future, but because I've grown up under the warmth and love of Shifu Shimu, my brothers and sisters, I know that whatever my future may be, conscience will be at the core of my being and my actions. I'm 21 and I'm brave. I'm 21 and I've been willing to constantly improve myself since I was young. I remember when I was four years old, I followed my parents outside the shopping mall in Los Angeles and asked people to sign the declaration of love and peace in the world. From that time, I knew that love is not defined by race nor borders and people need to respect one another. When I was six years old, I needed to give a presentation about Chinese New Year celebrations. I researched the internet and shared the story of Nian. I thought I was well prepared, but the result I got was a fail on my grade. Because after reading my report, the teacher told me, Gil, you have to be honest. They said my information was copy and pasted from the internet. And since then, I know that one of the most important qualities people should have is honesty. Conscience and honesty go hand in hand and are the basic principles of life. The government should also treat their citizens likewise. When I was seven, I began to practice playing majestic drums in Taijun Min. I learned to use the drums to encourage myself and inspire others. I also learned time management so I could finish my homework first to focus wholeheartedly during practice time. When I was 10 years old, I had the opportunity to deliver a message of love and peace to the Dalai Lama, and I learned the spirit of a true hero. 14, I stood on the stage and hosted a love and peace summit forum at the Hill College. Important scholars and experts from the Bay Area came to share the importance of love and peace. At the age of 18, in the Hall of the United Nations in New York, as an energy girl, I spread the positive energy of happiness to the whole world. When I was 20 years old, I went to New York and Washington, D.C. four separate times to tell people all over the world that Taiji Min is facing violations of human rights and the freedom of religious belief. Brothers and sisters stood in front of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Center for hours. We protested. We cried out about our injustices. We stood loud and clear, but we went unheard. The representatives and employees at Teco simply stayed behind their glass doors, looking blankly at us. On my fourth trip there, I was tasked with using the large speaker to share our case to people passing by and to the representatives inside. Initially, I was really nervous. I've never done something like this before because it was always another brother or sister up there and I just followed along. I was scared about saying the wrong things or not conveying our concerns correctly. Another sister went before me and she set a wonderful example. In times like this, I can always count on my brothers and sisters for support and encouragement. And once the sister passed on the speaker to me, I told myself, I could do this for Taiji Min. To be honest, my voice was a little shaky at first, but after speaking for a few minutes, the emotions attached to what I was, to what I was saying started to show. I was angry, sad, disappointed. Angry and disappointed at the corrupt officials and at the government for its inappropriate complacency and lack of checks and balances. I was sad and empathetic for my Shifu, Shimu, and brothers and sisters for all the trauma and distraught they had to go through. I was thankful for the hundreds of scholars, professionals, and other friends of Taiji Min that stood with us and fought against the injustice. I became more confident using the speaker as I progressed because the case didn't just revolve around Taiji Min anymore. It was a matter of human rights violation that needed to be brought to full attention. Honesty and respect for everyone's freedom of belief was one of the most important lessons I learned in my education in the United States. It does not need special attention, but it is a natural norm, just like how birth and death are natural phenomenon that happen in one's life. It is a natural phenomenon, but because of human greed, disobeying the rules and going against conscience, this natural phenomenon has become a devil-like existence. From false evidence, it turned into a chain of unmanageable lies. From an illegal prosecutor to discrediting the image of a democratic Taiwan. I know that the sense of justice and conscience in me is something that everyone has. 
whether it is a three-year-old or a hundred-year-old. When each of us can speak up for, for justice and stand up for the truth, the world will continue to develop prosperously. I thank my Shifu, Shimu, and Taiji men for these opportunities. Through Shifu's guidance and wisdom, I was able to develop goodness in myself and share that with others. Taijimen is filled with love and conscience, and growing up under this environment has allowed me to face life with courage and happiness. Many youths today struggle with finding a future for themselves versus for others, like their parents. But I know that in whatever I do, I want to better the world, and in the process, conscience will guide me towards a better future. To me, April 5th, I see day is a valuable reminder for myself and to others the importance of conscience. And if more people act with conscience, there will be more peace in the world. Thank you. Yeah, uh, there is no age for a conscience to awaken and to grow up in search of happiness for, for yourself and for others. That's how I would summarize your uh, contribution. I, and I thank you for sharing with us the evolution uh, of your conscience throughout the years of your existence and making us aware that uh, the perception of uh, to have uh, the feeling to have uh, that you have a conscience can start at a very early age uh, as at the age of four in a shopping mall in uh, LA you were asking already asking people to sign the declaration of love uh, and peace in the world. A first concrete act that was inspired by your conscience. And we now have uh, a last uh, uh, Dizzy that uh, will take the floor. I, it is Andy Lou. So Andy, I will give you the floor. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to tell the story, the whole story of the Taiji Man case in detail. Uh, the Taiji Man case originated from a political purge by the Taiwanese government in the name of religious crackdown in 1996. And after received ungrounded report, the Kaohsiung District and the Xinju District Prosecutor's Office both investigated and found nothing illegal and no victims. The case was closed then. However, Prosecutor Ho Quanren ignored the investigation results concluded by Kaohsiung and Xinju offices, did not follow the principle of no repetition of the same lawsuit, did not investigate lawfully, did not even give the Zhang of Taiji Men any chance to explain and went ahead to send large group of police force and investigators to search and investigate Taiji Men illegally. On the day of the search on December 19, 1996, the balance of the two bank accounts referred to in the indictment was a little bit more than 610,000 NT dollars. However, Ho Quanren and the prosecuting office ballooned the amount and released false information to the media before it was identified. Major newspapers published the next day stated that Tajiman was involved with tax evasion and defraud 3.1 billion NT dollars. The Grandmaster and all disciples of Tajiman were smeared by the public opinions overnight. On the same day, Zhang was taken to the Bureau of Investigation and detained right there and banned from being visited. On the 23rd of December, the wife of the Zhang took the initiative to go to the city investigation office to explain but was detained as well. On the 24th of December, two members of Taiji Mendizi, Chen Tiaoxin and Sister Peng, were also detained without being accused. Since Ho found no evidence, six days before the indictment, he subpoenaed a tax officer from the National Taxation Bureau, Shi Yuesen, to testify. Shi Yuesen had never been to Taijiman, but he lied that it was a crime school and involved with tax evasion. Shi Yuesen's testimony was regarded as the main evidence of tax evasion, and the case was illegally prosecuted and transferred to National Taxation Bureau. 
a series of mishandling the case by Prosecutor Ho has violated human rights, violated laws, and violated the due process of law. The control yuan investigated the case and concluded that Ho committed eight violations, including violations of non-disclosed investigation, illegal searches, illegal assets freezing, serious violation of scientific case handling, and damage to the judicial prestige. This accusation of Prosecutor Ho was then transferred to the Ministry of Justice for Accountability and Punishment. It was also determined that there was conflicts between the indictment and the evidence which not conform the law of evidence. Ho himself also admitted he didn't conduct any investigation. However, the National Taxation Bureau failed to investigate and provide evidence according to its duties, but based on a falsified indictment by Ho Quanren to determine the nature of Tai Chi Men was a cram school and illegally imposed taxes for the years 1991 to 1996. National Taxation Bureau also ignored the fact that the Ministry of Education, which is the authority to supervise cram schools, had issued letters in 1997 and 1999, and at the public hearing in the Legislative Yuan on December 21st, 2000, all publicly stated that Tai Chi Men was indeed not a cram school. Yang Chonghua, director of the Central District of Taxation Bureau, and Zhang Senhe, the chief of the National Taxation Bureau in Taipei City, were also present at the public hearing. They clearly know the fact that Tai Chi Men was not a cram school, but the Taxation Bureau continued to issue illegal tax bills in the name of the cram school. In 2007, the Supreme Court ruled that Tai Chi Men was innocent and did not owe any tax and determined that the salute to Grandmaster was a gift, which was tax-free income according to Article 4, Paragraph 17 of the Income Tax Law. Also, the nonprofit sales between disciples to help each other, such as exercise clothes, has nothing to do with the Zhang Menren and his wife, and there is not any tax issue. In 2009, the defendants who were innocently detained were all compensated by the country for unjust imprisonment, which once again confirmed that Tai Chi Men has suffered from injustice and none of the indictment are admissible. When the Supreme Court ruled in 2007 that there was no crime and no tax debt, the tax case against Tai Chi Men should have been dismissed in its entirety. In 2011, the interministerial meeting, uh, the interministerial meeting of the executive UN had decided that criminal investigation data could not be used. And in 2012, the announcement investigation conducted according to the result of the interministerial meeting of the executive UN, the result of 7,401 letters of evidence all indicated that the salute was a gift, which was consistent with the result of the criminal judgment, and the illegal taxation should have been revoked in accordance with the result of the investigation and the resolution of the interministerial meeting of the executive yuan. However, in May 2012, after Zhang Senhe became the Minister of Finance, Wu Zixin, then director of the Taipei International Taxation Bureau and Ran Qinghua, director of the Central District International Revenue Service Bureau, illegally divided the salute to the Grand Master into half gifts and half of the tuition fees, and once again, illegally imposed taxes. After 25 years of administrative relief, the Supreme Administrative Court ruled that Tai Chi Men won the case in 1991 and 1993 to 1996. The National Taxation Bureau also corrected all the tax penalties associated with the salute to zero for the five years, except for 1992, because Judge Xi Wu Feng of the Taichung Supreme Administrative Court ignored the hidden evidence of the Central District Taxation Bureau, gave 206 copies of the salute to the teacher as documentary evidence falsely published only five people stated it was a gift and even ignore the fact that the tax of year 1991 to 1996 
was of the same nature and the same facts made a person judgment of illegally separating the facts with both the year 1991 and 1993 to 1995 years and singly and single-handedly upheld the tax sanction for the year 1992. In the second instance of the Taijiman appeal, Judge Huang Shulin of the Supreme Administrative Court, who had previously participated in the investigation of the first instance, but had not recused herself from the law, and the case originated from a criminal case, according to the principle of criminal precedence and the spiritual intention of Article 177 of the Administrative Procedure Law, it should have ruled to stop the proceeding and wait for the outcome of the criminal judgment. But before the criminal judgment was determined on July 13, uh, 2007, on December, uh, on December 14, 2006, it was perversely decided by administration court. The National Taxation Bureau also transferred it for enforcement based on the illegal and erroneous judgment, which lead to seizure of the Taijiman practice place and the sacred land for future use and fell into the crisis of being auctioned at any time. Taijiman Shifu and Dizi exhausted all channels of administrative remedies and petitions. In 2009, the control yuan reinvestigated and listed seven violations of the law, including the failure of the National Taxation Bureau to determine the nature of the proceed of the case in accordance with its authority. The control yuan commissioner in charge of the investigation, Qian Ling Huijun, attended the Tai Jiman's fabricated case press conference and seminar in July 13, 2017, and publicly stated that there, was, uh, there were seven violations in the Tai Jiman tax case. Each time when she pointed out one violation, the NTB simply replied, I've got it wrong. She said, in 2011, I told the Minister of Finance that this case should be closed. The Minister of Finance did not take this case seriously. What happened was he took the tax bonus already and the tax was imposed to others. On June 17, 2010, bipartisan, uh, bipartisan legislator convened another public hearing and then Deputy Ministry of Finance Zhang Shenhe and Xiao Suchun, who is Deputy Director General of the NTB of the Central Area, promised on the spot to withdraw the wrongful levy of the consolidated income tax for the year 1992 and to end the illegal taxation of Taijiman within two months. In July of the same year, the Ministry of Finance also sent a letter to the NTB of the Central Area ordering it to withdraw the wrongful levy in accordance with Article 40 of Tax, uh, of tax Collection Act, but it violated the resolution of the public hearing and broke its promise by not withdrawing the wrongful levy and not revoking the illegal tax bill. In 2018, decision number 422 of the Supreme Administrative Court ruled in favor of Tai Chi Man again determined that Taijiman is a tax-exempt Qigong and martial arts organization and stated that the decision number 228 of the administrative court on year 1992 consolidated income tax did not consider that Taijiman won the criminal case and the fact of the gift thus inherently tax-exempt was proven by the investigation publicly. And that, the tax, uh, and that the National Taxation Bureau had, admit, uh, had admitted that Tai Chi Man was not a cram school. It was confirmed that the administrative court verdict and the tax penalties for the consolidated income tax for 1992 were inaccurate and thus cannot be reinforced. The Zhang Men of Tai Chi Man did not owe taxes at all. The NTB of Taipei owes Zhangmenren millions of dollars for wrongful tax enforcement, and the NTB of the Central Area owes the, uh, owes the Zhangmenren over a million dollars for illegal taxation. Unexpectedly, Lin Qingzhong, the director of uh, the Director General of the Administrative Enforcement Agency, sent a letter to the Xinzhu branch on March 20, uh, on March 28, uh, 2019 
requesting them to aggressively execute the auction process, coordinated the transferring agency and confiscate Taijiman's secret land when nobody bid at auction. This caused Li Guifen, chief enforcement officer of the Xinju branch to violate due process of law, knowing that the identification process had not been completed and knowing that the tax enforcement was illegal. Also, the Taipei High Administrative Court issued two letters on May 5th, 2020 and July 23rd, 2020 stated that the tax penalty for the year 1992 didn't consider new facts and new evidences, therefore requested the NTB of the central area to withdraw the wrongful tax penalty in accordance with Article 40 of the Tax Collection Act. However, Li Guifen, chief enforcement officer of the Xinju branch, still illegally auctioned the Taijiman's land, then seized the land when auction failed. It committed the crime of unlawful expropriation under Article 100 and, uh, 129 of the Criminal Code and violated the Articles 53 and 113 of the Compulsory Enforcement Act, as well as Article 18 and 22 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. This has caused the serious damage of Taijiman Shifu and Dizi passing down Taoism deprive their freedom of religion and the freedom of speech guaranteed by Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the Constitution and basic human rights such as the right to choose cultural life, equality and non-discrimination, and effective remedies. In August 2021, the media revealed that tax collector Shi Yuesheng, a witness who, co uh, who coerced by prosecutor Ho Kuanren in his false testimonies, revealed the truth before his death. He said that the case was led by Ho Kuanren and he was asked to cooperate the testimony at the time. It was being proved that this case was fabricated from the beginning. Each of the subsequent criminal prosecutions heavy tax penalties and tax enforcement violated due process of law. Fundamentally, human rights were violated under the guise of state power and seriously harmed the state, hurt the people and trample on justice. The Taijiman case has been referred to by experts and scholars as Demon's Mirror and 22A incident in legislation and tax. Not only was it listed as a major human rights protection indicator case by the control yuan, but more than 300 bipartisan legislators directly pointed out the NTB's wrongdoing by means of joint signatures, questions, uh, public hearings, coordination meetings, or press conference. Moreover, hundreds of domestic and foreign experts and scholars supported justice for Tai Chi Men and published hundreds of articles in Bitter Winter, Human Rights Without Frontiers, and other human rights websites over a year. This case has attracted great attention in the various side events of the Ministerial to Advance Freedom of Religion or Belief, where from nearly 90 countries participated in November 2020. International Religious Freedom Summit, IRF, in 2021, and the International Praise Conference on December 7th, 2021. Even international NGOs have submitted a written report on the Taijiman case to the UN Human Rights Council four times, condemning the Taiwanese government's unjust persecution of Taijiman. 25 international experts even co-signed a letter to Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen to express their concern and call for an end to the violation of human rights against Tai Chi Men. The freedom of culture, human rights, freedom of thought, and freedom of religion of Tai Chi Men Shifu and Deeds have been violated in Taiwan for more than a quarter century. More than tens of thousands of families have been persecuted. Even the volunteers who peacefully support Tai Chi Men have, have been illegally interrogated and arrested by the police and restrained. The methods of fabricate false evidence and smear the image of the legal and tax reform volunteers nowadays are the same as Ho Kuan Ren's illegal investigation of Tai Chi Men. 
showing that the legacy of authoritarianism continues to persecute the people. This case highlights the dark side of the legal and tax system and is not the only case of the state's violent against of the people. I hereby call on the Taiwanese government to immediately implement transitional justice, reveal the truth, return Taijiman's sacred land, clear Taijiman Shifu and Dizi's land, and restore justice. Let Taiwan become a country of true democracy, rule of law, freedom, and human right. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Andy Lu, for <clears throat> your broad overview of uh, the case. And we are now at the end of the second session, and I will give the mic uh, back to Marco Respinti to introduce the uh, next and last uh, panelist uh, who will make the conclusions of uh, this webinar. Thank you, Lily. It is my pleasure now to introduce Alex Amicarelli, who will draw the conclusion of this webinar, uh, important webinar on, on the International Day of Conscience. Uh, Mr. Amicarelli is the president of the European Federation for Freedom of Belief. Uh, Alex, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's uh, 3 28 in London. It's uh, night somewhere else and morning <laughs> in the United States. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, great webinar today. Uh, thank you. Willie, for making all the comments you made on all the testimonies from the DC. We keep stressing every time how important the testimonies from the DCs are, because only by knowing uh, about the first hand experience from the victims of the persecution in the Tajiman case, we can really appreciate the impact of what happened. Uh, because of the wrongdoing of those officials and uh, the continued wrongdoing, which is not ended yet. So um, I think the role of the testimonies and the witnesses is very, very important in this uh, kind of work that we are doing, and especially today that we are talking about conscience. Uh, my role is to try and uh, uh, make links between the different presentations that were made today. I took quite few notes. Uh, there have been uh, a lot of interesting points that were uh, raised, not only in regards to taxes, but exactly to conscience from very different perspectives. Uh, I will start from what uh, Mario Di Paoli uh, mentioned about giving to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but that Caesar cannot take everything. Uh, of course, this uh, statement relates to taxes, but it does apply to everything. Uh, the governments, in this case, the government of Taiwan, but in fact, any government, they cannot take everything not only in terms of taxes, but also in terms of conscience of the members of Taishimen. Giving a donation to the leader or to the teacher of Taishimen is part of the spiritual practice of Taishimen. So the government should not put their, uh, um, they should not interfere with this practice as this is part of the freedom of religion and belief of members of Taiji men who act based on their own conscience. Uh, a number of times we stressed how important it was the judicial case, these judicial cases in Taiwan that were solved in favor, concluded in favor of Taiji men. But what Stephen in his um, presentation very in interestingly called uneducated conscience, the lack of conscience and the lack of consciousness of those officials made the Taishiman case an everlasting case, which is not yet ended after over a quarter 
of the century. But what is conscience? Stephen, in his excited and enthusiastic uh, presentation, uh, is Nigerian, and we know how Nigerians are passionate when it comes to advocacy, and uh, is also minister, so uh, he knows uh, what he's doing. Uh, about conscience, he said, we can describe it as a moral sense of right or wrong. A conscience must be educated as an, educa an uneducated conscience can make a wrong decision, which is what happened. Matteo, Matti. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I, th I think there was a problem with the mic. Uh, uh, Stephen was also recalling the fact that uh, uh, the principle of conscience is present in different uh, uh, traditions of the Abram Abrahamic um, uh, faith. This is true. We find uh, um, concept, the concept of, um, um, of conscience in Judaism, of course, in the Torah, um, especially in the book of Leviticus, uh, there is mention of, um, of conscience in the forms of verbal honesty, fair treatment of employees, uh, respect for the elderly in the community, and of course for interpersonal and work ethics. We find the concept of, uh, uh, of conscience in other religious and spiritual traditions. Uh, this is the motto of Ramadan. We find uh, the concept of conscience in Islam and in the book of the Quran. The teaching of Islam is that conscience is the use of an understanding given to humans by Allah and human beings make use of their conscience to decide which path to follow, whether the wrong one or the right one. Other traditions, of course, go deep into the concept of conscience and consciousness. And I really like the fact that Massimo uh, mentioned the Zeno's conscience as novel of his choice for his presentation, uh, because this could let Massimo make the difference between conscience and consciousness, which is not present in all languages, but it's a very important one. Uh, also, the fact that Massimo stressed that uh, uh, Zeno was from Trieste, which is a land I'm, uh, I have a lot of affection for. Um, it was a land that was abused by the governments. It was raped by the governments that did show that they had no conscience in what they were doing. They abused the conscience of the people of those lands, uh, depriving them from their own languages and traditions as well. Uh, at some point, people of those lands even had to change their surnames to Italianize them because they had German sounding or Slavic sounding names. This kind of abuses happened also on the other side in former Yugoslav. So the uh, abuses of conscience or the lack of conscience does uh, happen in many countries and the worst thing is the abuse of the governments, as the governments are there to protect the people, not to abuse the people. And Massimo also recalled the, um, the great Buddhist sage uh, Nagarjuna, who wrote in his treatise on the great perfection of wisdom that the greatest master is the one capable of changing poison into medicine. And he said, Dr. Hong, gave the world the medicine of conscience, which is a medicine that is remarkably very effective. Massimo also said, recall the principle that I really uh, like and enjoy, which is the principle of peace and love. Massimo said only conscience can improve the, need, uh, the needed order to what is otherwise a chaotic flow of disconnected pieces of consciousness. Only those who recognize the central law of role of conscience can build a civilization of peace and love. The same principle was recalled by Mario in his presentation. He said, I want to conclude by recalling that all human beings are endowed with conscience. And for this reason, we must act towards each other with a sincere spirit of brotherhood. 
Our conscience can show us what is right and what is wrong, what is essential and what is superfluous, what leads to peace and love, and what distances us from them. This permits me to, to make uh, some further comments on the concept of peace and love that we also find in other traditions, such as in Rastafarianism. The very renowned uh, uh, advocate and missionary, I would say, of Rastafarianism, Bob Marley, in his song, Redemption Song, said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. So only conscience, only knowledge of our own potential, only our own understanding of ourselves, which is based on conscience, can let us be free spirits and have free minds. We could keep, we could uh, uh, go on for uh, for very long because there are, there have been really a number of uh, very interesting uh, insights, but we don't have a lot of time because we are a little bit behind schedule. So, uh, trying to make some conclusions from all the points that were made today, uh, these little remarks I made uh, recalling some other traditions. Uh, what's the central doctrine of Taiji Man? The central doctrine of Taiji Man is nurturing the positive energy from the universe, following the good examples of sages from all times. This is a real appreciation of the conscience of the world. Dr. Hong himself, in one of his, uh, in one of his uh, presentations, said, with happiness comes a joyful family, but with conscience comes a peaceful world. So Taiji Man is a movement of conscience, is a movement for the progress of conscience. So as the old saying runs, there is always room for improvement. If we apply this principle to the doctrine of Taiji Man, there is always room for the improvement of conscience. This applies to everyone and everywhere. And we hope that starting from Taiwan, that we're blessed to have someone like Dr. Ong teaching them about the medicine of conscience could go back to where they were before 1996, appreciated the importance of the teachings of Taiji Man and go back to a state of conscience and develop and remark the importance of conscience in Taiji Man, let Taiji Man free to carry out their own activities as they should in a democratic state, as we all believe that Taiwan is the other China, a real democracy. Thank you. I don't know if we want to give the mic back to Massimo or we can conclude with uh, the video that our friends from Taiji Man have prepared, which is a prayer.
全都。